half of all breeding American bullies in the UK are descended from one dog known as Killer Kimbo. Is that... <laughs> I don't know if I trust this website. That's too funny to be real. I, dude, I think if a, dude, if a dog gets a kid and you have to tase it three times, I think the dog... Look, you have to... You have to give credit where it's due. That is an absolute unit. He can have the kid. My gamer min-max brain is making me want to get one now. It's the meta choice. It's the meta. You have to. Some of you may have seen recently, particularly in Birmingham, there have been a slew of extremely brutal dog attacks. And these attacks are apparently by the, the Bully XL subbreed of Pitbull, which my understanding is there's sort of a, a general Pitbull Terrier ban in the UK. That's, I, I believe that's the case, but these, like, bypass that. And surprise, these ones, for, for some reason, who knows why, who knows why, are brutally attacking people and, I was unaware, are uh, killing grown men. You may have seen videos on social media. I did. I don't think I can share them on Twitch. You don't really see blood or gore, but the attacks are... Real brutal, really, really, really fucked and brutal. We're talking like dogs latching onto neck meat and ripping a person to the floor and slamming them. Uh, that may have been a death, Ausred. I, I shared a video with Ausred. Someone died. At least one person died. I don't know if it's that those videos. Just so you know. So we'll go with the BBC article first. So I don't know where Stonel is. Let me see. Stonel is a village in Staffordshire, close to Shenston, Brown Hills, Walsallwood, and Aldridge. Never heard of it in my life, but anyway. So, the video I shared was not this guy dying, because that was in Birmingham. Man killed in Stonel, American Bully XL attack named. And it's the American Bully XL that is the, the breed that Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said will be banned by the end of the year. First, it needs to be defined, clearly, and then banned. I believe, like I said before, there is currently some sort of Pitbull Terrier ban, but this, you know, skirts, skirts the definition, I guess, so they need a new definition for this one. By Maisie Ola and Joanne Rittle. A man who died after suffering multiple injuries in an attack by two suspected American Bully XLs has been named as Ian Price. He got he got the double dog dare, the double dip dog dare treatment. That's fucked. I can't imagine how scary that is. I remember back when I lived uh, in Tame, at my folks' place. I'd be at the park in the middle of the night, and f four bull terriers would like run up to me, and my heart would f race. They were chill, but it's like, man, what like what are, what are you doing? Letting dogs this large just run free in a group at night. What are you? What are you doing? I th I feel there's a point where training is irrelevant, and it comes down to the the practice of the owner that matches as well. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have someone releasing their pet lion or wolf into the street and then go like, "Oh man, it's the training." No. A man who died after suffering multiple injuries in an attack by two suspected American Bully XLs has been named as Ian Price. He was left in a critical condition after being attacked by the dogs in Stonel near Walsall. Cool, don't know where that is. The 52-year-old was taken to Birmingham's Queen Elizabeth Hospital, but was later confirmed dead. A man, 30, from Litchfield, has been arrested on suspicion of manslaughter, said Staffordshire Police. Officers had spoken to the dog owner on two on two previous occasions after being called to incidents in the area. What kind of incidents? What do you mean? What the fuck do you mean? Just give just give your chimp some Prozac, okay? <laughs> you do you know about that? We can look at that again at some time in the future. That story is horrifying. Was it Prozac or was it was it like Ambien or was it Xanax? What was she giving that chip? Anyway, it doesn't matter. It has been given a further 10 hours to question the suspect. He had initially been arrested on suspicion of being in charge of dogs dangerously out of control, causing injury. 
and now it's and now it's manslaughter because they they fucking killed the guy. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has pledged to ban American bully XL dogs, describing them as a danger to communities. Sure, maybe maybe mild. What? A- <laughs> Mm, I don't know. That feels that feels mild. That feels mild. Some people are going to say that seems more extreme, but I think that sounds uh, more mild than a danger to general life and limb. Police said it was understood the dogs were bully XLs, but further tests were being carried out to determine their breed. One of the dogs died after being restrained, and the other died after an injection was given by a vet. Police said, "Holy shit!" So the COVID vaccine killed? No, I'm kidding. It's a joke. The attack happened in Main Street about uh, 3.15 on Thursday. So this is post the other attacks. This is when it had already started being talked about. Members of the public tried to help him. Yeah, you're not stopping these dogs. If you have seen the video of the attacks in Birmingham, they tried to intervene. These, you're not, you're not stopping these dogs. These are the dogs the guy owned. Presumably two of whom killed this man you're not stopping you're not stopping this lump of lump of muscle you're not doing it if one of these is off lead and something goes wrong you're not getting that fucker back on a lead without someone getting hurt meanwhile children at nearby saint peter's primary academy were stopped from leaving for several hours for safety reasons yeah for sure one of the dogs was captured outside while the other was contained in the owner's flat did he run home One resident who wished to remain anonymous said in March a woman and her dog were seen being chased into a shop by the same two dogs that had killed Mr. Price. It was carnage. The two dogs were after her dog. So, yeah, with a different owner, that wouldn't happen, right? Because a a responsible owner would recognize, even if they're the best trained dog in the world, just because of their size and power, it doesn't make sense to ever let them go loose in public. Problem is, people like this fucking guy are the owners! I think they'd taken a few nips at him, the woman was hysterical, but she was unhurt. The resident said police had been called to the incident, which also saw customers jumping over the shop's counter for protection, and the dog's owner had been given a caution! Are you fucking... I'm gonna stop going outside, bro. (laughs) This... Just just lodge all of this in your brain. These are the kinds of people who own and collect multiple of these dogs. Okay? Just bear this in mind. Bear this in mind. The people who own these dogs are the people who let this happen. Police had attended the incident on 30th March, confirmed Staffordshire Police, who said the shop was damaged after people in the area went inside. No complaints were made in relation to the incident, and no offences were identified. Officers had also spoken to the dog's owner, he had added. The dog's owner was cooperative and engaged positively with the officers. Both dogs were in the address at the time and appeared to be calm. They did not show any signs of aggression towards officers. You can't judge it based on that. You're taking a risk. Like, even a small dog at a dog park, you're taking some degree of risk. Huge dogs out... In in areas where there's in, in like you know presumably what town center city center, that's fucking crazy, that's insane. They had reviewed video of the fatal incident and previous reports and concluded that the material did not meet the criteria for a referral to the independent office for police conduct. Sup superintendent is that what it is? Tracy Mayer of Staffordshire Police said the victim's family was being supported. Detectives continued to investigate and we have taken statements. Viewed CCTV and carried out house-to-house inquiries in the local area, but are keen to speak to anyone with information. Is this what you mean? Was is this is this suggesting that the police dealt with the previous incidents correctly, and that they didn't act negligently, and a lot <laughs> in doing nothing about this guy releasing his murder beasts regularly? <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said American bully XL dogs will be banned by the end of the year after work was done to define the breed. He said he shared the nation's horror regarding videos of recent dog attacks, including Thursday's incident that tragically led to a fatality that I hadn't heard about until just now, just a few moments ago. I will warn you, I'm not playing it on stream, any of them on stream, because I think it's probably TOS, but I would suggest 
It's probably good to see just to understand what's happening and how bad it is, but just be prepared for what you're going to see uh, if you look it up. A recent dog attack on an 11-year-old girl in Birmingham sparked the debate about banning certain dog breeds. The girl and two men were set upon by an American bully XL outside shops in Bordersley Green on 9th September. I presume this is the attack I saw a great deal of video about. No one could do anything. No one could... Zero chance. Zero chance without a weapon. Without a weapon, without a gun... Probably they didn't stand a chance. Anna, Anna Pound. Someone pinned it? Maybe I'm misremembering that. I saw people just trying to ineffectually, like, whack it with a stick and stuff. So not at the... There was like a... I think it was a gas station? It looked... Was the guy running around outside a gas station? And this... Yeah, this dog was just leaping up, like, sinking its teeth into him and ripping him onto the floor, like, just proper body slamming him. Uh, people were trying to help. They could not do shit. Anna Pown, 11, said she had started to run after seeing a dog staring at her when it grabbed her hand and started moving her about. What a what a mild description for, for it trying to tear chunks. 34% increase in dog attacks recorded. What the? Since from when to when? Hull up. 34% over the past five years. Come the fuck on. And the dog population is the dog population has risen by 15%, and the number of dog attacks has increased by 34% over that period of time. Curious. Hmm, 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 hmm. Following Mr. Sunak's pledge to ban the breed, the girl's mother told the BBC, We are happy about this news. But we would be more happy if owners were forced to look after their dogs better. Here's the thing. One mistake, someone's dead. One mistake, someone's dead. Bro, not even mistake. Not even mistake. One instance of negligence, someone's dead. I don't think if you're going to if you're going to just change it so that there are tighter standards, I think you would still have to be taking uh these massive dogs away from the vast majority of people who own them because they're not appropriate owners. However, the Dog Control Coalition, a group including RSPCA, Battersea Dogs Home, and the Royal Kennel Club, said banning specific breeds was not the solution, pointing to irresponsible breeding, rearing, and ownership. Guess what? All three of those things, not a problem. Suddenly not a problem if if you do not have any of that kind of dog at all, and then don't have to worry about the uh, bone-crushing murder machine being looked after properly. BBC Verify reported that 10 people died because of dog bite injuries in England and Wales last year. Now, this is just some context. This is just some context for what we're going to look at next. This is what is going on in the UK. Large number of dog attacks seems to disproportionately be this, this, uh, this form of pit bull terrier. The owners of these kinds of dogs have spoken out. I would say something like that Goblin Works. I think if you were going to license, if you're going to have licenses and you're going to have standards and you're going to have stricter stricter requirements, i.e., or e.g., I should say, for, for instance, you can never let this dog off the leash at a public park, perhaps. Things like that, where, it's, where you, you recognize the possibility that it doesn't matter how much training there is, the level of risk is too high if the dog is allowed to be in this situation. However, I don't think you can just apply that with things as they are now. I think you have to go from scratch. I think you have to take them from people, and you have to, you have to then, from all the current owners not having them, then have some sort of process for people to get licensed and then have dogs again. I think we'd have a grandfathering in that would occur. Like, if, if we just went for, oh, now you're going to need a license, people are going to get grandfathered in. I don't think, I don't think that's going to be too good for the uh, delicious children of the nation. Now, that's context. That's what's going on. Some of the owners of these uh, dogs... <laughs> whew, they have decided to protest, protest the plans to ban the breed. 
Let me get this on screen for you. From Birmingham Live, Mass XL Bully Walk planned in Birmingham as owners say breed is not the problem. Owners are organizing the Birmingham meetup to prove people lot wrong and said they wanted to see as many people and specifically kids as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe the Pitbulls can use the internet and are baiting children into a into a <laughs> into an ambush. <laughs> I, <laughs> what in the what in the hell I should say for YouTube? No, this is real. This was not a joke. They decided to prove to prove the responsibility of XL bully owners, to prove that the dogs are totally safe, they were going to mass together in Birmingham however many of these dogs they could. You know, just make it as stress-inducing as possible for these animals, all in one place, together. <laughs> hey, you know what? Birmingham has a massive homeless problem. I suppose releasing thousands of XL Pitbull Terriers could be <laughs> could be one solution. Uh, a mass XL bully dog walk is being planned in Birmingham, with the organizer hoping as many people and kids as possible turn out. Campaigners say they want to show how gentle the breed really is amid plans to outlaw it after a spate of attacks. There was a poster for the walk, but we will see that in the next article. Don't worry. Don't worry. Well, here's the thing. I think any dog you're going to just... Any, if you have an event where it's bring as many as you can of this, of, of a breed of dog or of dogs to a city that's going to be loud, there are going to be tons of people, there are going to be tons of other dogs in a, in a compact space that any dog, that's dangerous as hell. It's not fair, that is not fair to the animal at all to put them in that situation. That's crazy. And you don't know if the dog's of other people are going to be proper so properly socialized, for example. You're putting your dog in danger by bringing them there. Just in insane irresponsibility, regardless of breed at that point. That is just flat-out irresponsible behavior. Although that does seem to be the hallmark of the owners of these kinds of dogs. There will be a third article, by the way. Spoilers. There will be a third article. Jesus Christ. Holy. What the? Some owners claim their dogs are loving and pose no danger to others, and hundreds of thousands have also backed calls to save the breed by signing an online petition. The meetup is being planned in the city on Saturday, September 30th, in a bid to prove people wrong. The advert, which is being circulated online, reads, Bully meet. All dogs welcome. Want to see as many people as possible. Bring as many people and kids as possible. Friendly walk. We can't be stopped for walking our dogs. We can't be stopped for creating a mass murder swarm and releasing it into the city. Let's show how gentle the XL bully really is. Yes, they specifically asked for more children to be brought, which is why I theorize this was written by a pit bull. It's, a, it's an ambush. Anyone from Birmingham or surrounding areas turn up. Let's prove people wrong. Jake Harris from the 0121 Bullies Instagram and TikTok account told Birmingham Live the meetup was being organized because they need to show people that the XL bullies are not the problem, he continued. It's all about the owners. Yeah! Like the people organizing this walk! You're all f crazy! The problem is... Disproportionately, the owners of these dogs seem to be f in the head. It's all about the owners. I've got three XL bullies and not one of them would hurt a soul. Note, he's not saying, I always keep them under control. He's saying they wouldn't hurt anyone. What, so you're going to let them off leash in a city? So that's okay? They wouldn't hurt someone? No. That statement shows you shouldn't have an animal like this. I've, how about, I've got three XL bullies. I always make sure they're under control. Here's what I do. They wouldn't be able to hurt someone. How about that? Never. Yes, they might look big and scary, but they are big family dogs. I've got my fingers crossed there will be a lot of families there. Why? You would hope it's for the image of it being a family dog, but why would you be like, man, I hope there are a ton of families around these dogs that totally aren't dangerous. What do you mean? We need to stand up for our dogs. We need to show the government how friendly and loving our big dogs are. 
He said an exact location for the meetup will be shared closer to the day. What, so that people can't avoid it? So that locals can't avoid it? Birmingham Live reported that XL bully owners in Birmingham were traveling miles out of the city to walk their dogs after a backlash following the government's decision to ban the breed. Hey, that's some responsibility. Some owners are even hiring out private fields so they can walk their dogs without fear of having them potentially taken away. Steve Constantino, who runs Spartan Kennels in Coventry, said Brummy XL bully owners, that Brummy meaning from Birmingham, were hiring out private fields where dogs can run without a lead because they were worried about the implications of the upcoming breed ban. So presumably they let their dogs run without a lead in the city or in, in local dog parks, normally. It's a risk. It's a big old risk. He said some were even frightened to take their dogs out, and one woman hid behind a tree as he walked past with his bully XL. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, was their original plan. I have a second article. The plan changed slightly. And the way it changed is that the march against banning XL bullies, uh, banned XL bullies. Too dangerous. <laughs> no, it didn't get cancelled. They, uh, they decided they shouldn't have dogs. They... <laughs> They listened to feedback about how irresponsible it was. Presumably how irresponsible it was just on the just on the back of bringing a ton of animals that capable of hurting people into an extremely stressful situation surrounded by tons of dogs they don't know, people they don't know, sights and smells they might not know in the city. Bad idea for any breed of dog. Maybe they cancelled it because of that, okay? XL bu bully owners have been told not to bring their dogs to a mass walk set up to oppose plans to ban them after a spate of attacks. Organizers made the decision following an online backlash to their original call for a lar large-scale walk of the pets in protest at proposals to outlaw them. Here's the thing as well. Even if they don't understand how unfair it is to the dog to put them in that situation, if they believe it's the owner, not the breed, and they're getting a mass number of people to bring their dogs... They're suggesting it's some of the owners. Surely that means some of the owners who show up are going to be the owners who don't look after their dogs properly. And they're putting their dogs at risk of the bad owners and present potentially having a chain reaction happen. Even in their worldview, their view of how things are, it's stupid to do that because they're risking the bad owners resulting in their dogs getting hurt. Insane. That I agree with Kage Tensei. Kage Tensei says it's all of them. It's anyone who would bring their dog to something like that. Yes. They initially said they wanted to show how gentle the breed really is and hope to see as many people and kids as possible at the event, due to be held at an as-yet unidentified location on Saturday, September 30th. Some owners said their dogs were loving and posed no danger to others, and hundreds of thousands also backed calls to save the breed by signing an online petition. But in scores of comments under Birmingham Live's story about the mass walk on Facebook, many voiced their concern about the meat being dangerous. One said it was highly insensitive towards any XL bully victim's loved ones and extremely irresponsible. It will now be a walk for people only, with those attending urged to make t-shirts, jumpers, and banners to show off our loving giants instead of bringing their pets. The only thing that can stop a bad guy with a pit bull is a good guy with a pit bull. Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the breed was a danger to our communities, particularly our children. Under the story post posted on social media, because don't forget, the irresponsible care for these, these pets results in them being killed, results in them being pet, put down. The owners are also a risk to, the, to these animals to begin with. And they seem to, they say it's about the owner. But then they have this almost pathological need for people to agree that they're, they're, the dogs are safe. So instead of going, I'm a responsible owner, I'm going to look after my dog and keep my dog under control. It's, I need to show you how safe my dog is. I can just let it run around. Let it around kids. Let it around kids. Well, what happens when the kid gives its ear a yank or something? Any dog, it's going to be a big risk. Even the friendliest dog of biting that kid. And then your dog's bigger the dog, the easier it is for that damage to be much greater. Just saying. 
The dogs are expected to be banned by the end of the year. <laughs> Tim is clearly upset that the Birmingham dog apocalypse is cancelled. Hold your horses, Demonov. Let me finish. Under the story posted on social media, Claire Banner posted, I have two bullies, socialized and very friendly, and I personally think this is a terrible idea. Everyone has said it's not the breed, it's the irresponsible owners, which I 100% agree with. But how many irresponsible owners are going to be there? Yo! An XL bully container... Container? An XL bully owner... I, I presume it's a white woman. That's why I thought she would be containing the dog within her body. Anyway, 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 sorry. Joke, that's a joke. XL bully owner with some part of a breed. Some part of a brain. With some part of a brain. Oh my god, I can't talk. Yes, the dog breed is XL bully. Yes, because it's a pit bull terrier variation. And also, XL bully makes it sound scarier. How many irresponsible owners are going to be there that haven't socialized their dog and they haven't spent time training it. Where's the point where you say, keep them leashed and under control at all times? It's this pathological need to be like, the dogs are fully safe if you train them. No, no dog is. No, not fully. Some more than others, depending on temperament, depending on cap uh, depending on physical ability to cause harm. You never... you. D a dog alone with a child, you probably should never have that happen, regardless of breed in my humble opinion. And I'm a dog lover. I love dogs. It's a good idea, everyone getting together. But with this potentially being a massive turnout, mixing thousands of dogs along with people and children is going to be a disaster and could be very dangerous. Not to mention how delicious the homeless in Birmingham probably smell to the dogs. Not to mention what could, what could happen with just random people in Birmingham. There are some... There are some homeless guys who are not doing too well who might even get aggro or something. Charlie Ree wrote, This is not only highly insensitive for victims' loved ones, don't care about that, to be honest, but it is extremely irresponsible. True! Anyone who knows anything about dogs knows pack walks with strange dogs who don't know each other is unfair on the dogs, unless they have been proven to never react to this kind of situation before. Now, we have the poster. We have the original poster and the updated poster. Alright? So to update the walk, to update the potential uh, attendees of the walk, they posted the invitation again, increased the canvas size in GIMP or whatever, and put no dogs allowed at the top. The original poster, bring as many people and kids as possible. Bring friendly dogs with poo bags and water. Friendly walk. We can't be stopped for walking our dogs. Four exclamation marks. This is, I think, an incredible insight into the owner of these dogs, the kind of person who owns these dogs, and has an incredible need for them to be viewed as perfectly safe, totally harmless, no matter what. Just train them right, and then they can never hurt anyone. Just train them right, and then they will never bite. Any dogs welcome. Let's show how gentle the XL bully really is. Let's get this out there. T-H-E-I-R. Update. No dogs allowed. <laughs> we, unfortunately... The XL bully has been banned from the walk to show how safe the XL bully is due to safety concerns. <laughs> oh, these are just people's comments being collected by the newspaper. Mm. The updated poster for the event now reads, No Dogs Allowed. A post by the 0121 Bullies Instagram reads, Got too much press and too much riding on this now. We need to make t shirts Too much riding on it? What, you mean to risk a, a bulldog, uh, sorry, a pit bull massacre? To risk a pit bull massacre? Is that why you've, we've got too much riding on it, we can't bring the dogs? If you think it's perfectly safe to do this, it doesn't matter because it's safe. You've just implied that you don't think it's safe. Now we need to make t-shirts, banners, jumpers, anything to show off our loving giants. Everyone, please share this far and wide. Birmingham Live has reached out to Jake Harris, who runs the account, to ask for further comment. Yeah, yeah, same comment. Same comment. Now, it is weird that they don't want the attention. Would I bring my kid to a mass meeting of chihuahuas? Not a fucking chance. Did you know chihuahuas have a, have a reputation for being vicious? I think a lot of people aren't aware of this. Ladies and gentlemen, the pit pocalypse is back on. Organizer of Mass XL Bully Walk in Birmingham now allowing dogs in second U turn. Jake Harris has now said dogs under six months old would be allowed to attend the event. 
What? Ah, yes. The dogs with less opportunity to have been trained or socialized. <laughs> the perfect, the perfect storm. The perfect storm, which has sparked controversy. The organizer of a planned mass XL bully walk in Birmingham has made a third change, saying puppies would be allowed at the protest against plans to ban the animal. Dogs aged under six months old will be able to attend the gathering on Saturday, September 30th. How big is a pit... Uh, XL bully, six months old. How big? <laughs> this is a... This is a Reddit post of someone talking about their six... This is their six-month-old XL bully. This is someone on Reddit making a post about their six-month-old XL bully that they're concerned and want to breed. I uh, want to want to bring to the vet. Sorry. Sorry. Bring to the vet? Bring to the vet. They want to bring their six-month-old XL bully to the vet. Here's a picture of a six-month-old XL bully. Um, pretty big. In my opinion, from in in my in my estimation, based on the uh, surrounding, you know, you can guess how big the plant pot is or whatever. Take the take the perspective into account. Maybe, hmm, it's big and has less training or time to uh, be socialized. Right, right. I'm staying away from Birmingham. We already decided. We visited Birmingham not too long ago. It was fucking horrible. Just because of the look, all the all the empathy, sympathy in the world for homeless people. Okay, just leave me alone. <laughs> just I just look. I'm sorry for you, bro. I don't want to see you. Can you just live under a bridge or so? anyway? Uh, <laughs> Birmingham is like a zombie apocalypse of homeless. I could imagine it just being a bloodbath. It probably won't be. Probably won't be, but it could be. Organizer Jake Harris initially said he hoped to see as many children and families as possible at the event, aimed at XL bully owners and their pets. After the government announced plans to outlaw them after a spate of attacks, he then said no dogs would be allowed after an online backlash, and today, Friday, September 22nd, Mr. Harris told the BBC that XL bullies, which were still puppies, would be free to walk at the protest. So he, did he say puppies, or did he say six months and under? Because six months... Five months, looking like, based on my searches just now, pretty big, pretty big. If you're talking about minimizing risk to the attending children, for instance, probably far more likely to trigger each other into freaking out, right, as well, because they'll, they'll, like I said, less time to be trained, less time to get experience. How about mandatory leashes? They won't do mandatory muzzles because they'll... For PR purposes, they'll go, no muzzles, right? Because it makes them look dangerous because they have the muzzle. But guess what? If everyone leashed and muzzled their dogs, you know, you can get comfy muzzles, you can get, like, humane, comfy muzzles for your dog. We'd never have a problem with bites. No one will be dead from dog attacks. Come on. Jeez, and today... Mr. Harris told the BBC that XL bullies, which were still puppies, would be free to be walked to the protest to be held at an as yet undisclosed location. He said, the simple fact is, I, simple fact is, I don't want no camera taking pictures of a dog as barking to go play with another dog because social media has this power to do numbers. They can portray this whole meat off one picture. Ah, I'm glad, I'm glad these dogs are in his uh, capable non-dementoid hands. So if you want to come and you want to bring a dog, bring a puppy. Don't bring no big full-grown dog. It's not going to be one of them actual meats. It's turned into more of a protest. Jesus. Christ. Asked whether now was the best time for a gathering of XL bully owners, Mr. Harris said, because of social media and the platform it's reached now, there's no turning back on it. I'll be totally honest. I'm probably one of the only people that's managed to get somewhere with this kind of thing. Ah, nice. Ego as well. Ego as well. Perfect. Perfect. Explaining how the walk was organized, he told the BBC, This has been planned for about two, three months. It wasn't meant to be some big walk that has now blown all over the social media. 
This was literally just a few mates coming together to have a little bully meet. You're fucking lying. Bring as many people and kids as possible, he posted on social media. Why are you lying? It's right there on your account. This was literally just a few mates coming together to have a little bully meet. Bring as many people and kids as possible. Okay, buddy. Re Asked whether the response to the event had been positive or negative, he admitted it had been a mix of both. I think they need to be removed from their owners and then allowed with some sort of uh, permit or licensing. The dogs that are already banned should probably be allowed with some sort of permit or, or licensing and standards because we already have banned breeds, I believe. My understanding is that this is this XL bully is sort of a loophole to a band that already exists. Could be incorrect. And in fact, perhaps, perhaps strangely, the argument for not getting rid of them is people saying, oh, it's the owner, not the dog. No, I agree. I agree. I think people can keep tigers responsibly, for instance. I think people can take, can, can have wolves and whatnot. There are too many of the people who should not have an animal like this with the animal. Something drastic needs to be done, and then you can, you can go down a more reasonable path of allowing people to keep them. He continued, everyone has their own opinion on this breed, but there are a lot of good opinions out there as well. If all goes to plan for Saturday, there may be people turning up with their families. Like, for instance, if someone says it's not the lions, it's the owner, I would also agree. How many attacks happen each year? I think it was something like 22,000? Last year, there were nearly 22,000 cases of out-of-control dogs causing injury. Yeah. While the dog population rose 15% over the last five years, there was a 34% increase in dog attacks. True, dogs, not just pit bulls, However, recently, uh, lethal attacks, or the most recent lethal attack, has been a pit bull, and there have been many attacks just recently that were uh, XL bullies. I think probably lots of, uh, generally, large dogs should be somewhat restricted. And you gotta be, you got to be responsible as hell anyway with a small dog. Regardless of the, here's the thing, regardless of the reason, whether it is a breed or the owners, you've got to address it one way or the other. You've got to address it one way or the other. Because it's, it's increasing disproportionately to the rate of uh, dog ownership increasing, right? Or not even dog ownership, uh, dog presence. There has to be some reason. Dog owners could be getting worse. It could be the kind of dogs people have. Uh, it could be that people who are responsible owners are getting disproportionately, disproportionately more dogs than everyone else. You, I don't think you're going to fix it by implementing some sort of restriction. Yeah, I think it has to be like a wipe and then a restart. Well, that's the thing that's weird as hell, Telezak. I can understand allowing weapons, but not dangerous animals. A weapon can kill someone, but it doesn't have a mind of its own, right? So, you, so you, you, can, you can trust, you can put your faith in people. How do you go like, I can't trust people with these weapons, but I can trust people with something that can kill and has a mind of its own to control that thing? That, re that requires more expertise, that requires more responsibility than a weapon. And yet we have tighter restrictions on one than the other, the other way around. It's weird as hell, to me at least. Mr. Harris argued owners were the problem when it came to XL Bully, not the breed itself. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's clearly a huge problem with the owners if, that's, if that is all it is. There's clearly a huge problem with the owners. How do you fix the owner problem without taking the dogs away from those owners? How do you identify those owners? Do you let someone get massacred first? Like, what do you... They're gentle giants. They're known as family dogs. Before the ban, most people weren't even scared of them. How about before videos of people being torn to pieces? Mr. Harris previously told Birmingham Live the meetup was being organized because of the need to show people that the XL bullies are not the problem. He continued, 
It's all about the owners. I have three bully XLs or XL bullies and not one of them would hurt a soul. Again. This is the same quote again? No. Wrong. Wrong. Moose. Who I love with all my heart. Could I say he would never hurt someone? No. You need to make sure your dog isn't in a position to hurt someone. It shouldn't be a choice your dog is making. True, Moose would annihilate many animals. Many, many, many animals. This is the, this is the tale so far of the, of the XL bully meetup. Let me look up what proportion. Or rather, what proportion of dogs in the country is this breed versus how much they're responsible for? Or maybe it's more meaningful to have number of owners of this kind of dog versus attacks. Okay, let's make sure let's make sure there's a good source. Let's make sure that this isn't bullshit, because this is pretty This is Yeah, this is way crazier. I was thinking, is this going to be like, dude, are they going to make up like 10% of that, those 22,000 attacks? No, it's not like 10%. <laughs> it, it, it's, uh, so Pipple Terriers were banned. Dogsbite.org. How do they do there? Bro. This is for the US, though. This is for the US, though. You going to do a bet? The prediction will just be called dot dot dot. You are going to bet, according to dogsbite.org, between the years 2005 to 2019, what percentage of fatal attacks were committed by pit bull terriers? Vote quick. This is fatalities. This is dogs, dogs bite. Fatalities from 2005 to, 200, uh, to, 200, to 2005 to 2019, according to dogsbite.org, what percentage of fatal attacks uh, were by pit bull terriers? The answer is about 65 to 66%. The 60 to 70 percenters, you win. Dog attacks by breed UK. What research has been done suggests that dog behavior is more influenced by its nurture than its nature. How about you f keep your dog on a leash and muzzle it if it's big enough to seriously harm or kill someone? Which is going to be most fucking dogs. Keep your dog safe from being aggravated, biting someone, and then being put down. Where is the info for the UK? In the UK, it's going to be very, very small because they're already banned. Uh, well, pit bull terriers, are, I believe, are banned. And these are just a loophole. Yes, they were banned in 1991. So we need the numbers. We need the, we need the pit bull numbers 81 to 1991. The XL bully, the, the number of them that there are has got to be pretty fucking small. It might be impossible to find accurate stats even. I don't know. When did XL bullies start becoming popular over here? Percent... Dog attacks. UK XL bully. We are doing pit bull betting. Ah! Let me check this. According to one report, American XL bullies have been involved in 44% of attacks on people in 2023 and 75% of fatalities since 2021, despite only being around 1% of the dog population. From where? What report is this? That seems just fucking impossible. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is I news? That's 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 gotta be fucking bullshit. Yeah, this article just says according to one report and doesn't tell you what fucking report. The source is Bully Watch. The breed, which was first introduced to the UK around 2014, has soared in popularity in recent years, but there is a dearth of reliable data on their numbers. We don't have the info. We just have a bunch of individual examples of them attacking people recently. Despite the breed being responsible for a high proportion of fatal attacks, Bully Watch, a group that is pushed for the ban, believes they make up less than 1% of all owned dogs across the country. Bully Watch. Why would I believe them? Who the fuck are they? 
Where are we getting there? A high number of the total. Yeah, I f I find it weird that people would be like, "Oh, the the breed has nothing to do with it." Okay, can I own a wolf? Is that okay? Is it? Are you saying this particular breed has no tendency towards aggression at all, or that that can't happen? And that they're a blank slate. Because sometimes you, sometimes people are defending the particular breed. Other times you have people going, Oh, it's like a, it's, it's a blank slate. All that matters is the upbringing. Nurture matters so much more than nature. Dogsbite.org Be advised. Stuff I'm reading is going to be pretty biased, probably. Because, for example, this... This site, dogsbite.org, that I'm that I'm looking at now is for dog bite survivors. So whether they're whether they're correct or not, right? You just bear in mind that they're gonna be biased because they're fucking people who got hurt by dogs. Yeah. So what they're doing is essentially plugging plugging up a loophole. So pitbull terriers were banned. XL bullies are like, mm, technically, we're not that kind of dog or whatever. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, Ghost Doll. You're saying you can raise a python from an egg to an adult, but eventually that fucker will bite you. You should never trust it to not bite you. You should never be in the in the position to tr have to trust a pet like that. At the very least, never have to trust it to not hurt someone else. Put yourself at risk, don't put other people at risk, and thereby also put your pet at risk, because your pet's going to be put down if it hurts someone else. Apparently it's not just this one, but there's a lot of there's a lot of like technicalities being called upon to dodge a pre existing ban. I think there is also so even just going again with the it's the owner issue, I have a strong feeling that a large proportion of the people drawn to these specific breeds are gonna be people who should fucking not have these these breeds as well. Probably does some uh, self selection stuff. Like I believe you could totally safely have, have an X an XL bully. However, I would also bet a large, probably majority of people who have them fucking shouldn't. No, I think you can responsibly own them, but responsibly owning them isn't just training them and then oh they won't hurt anyone, run free. <laughs> so yeah, a, a problem a problem is. That there is a lack of data on, for example, how many there even are. WalesOnline.co.uk Half of all breeding American bullies in the UK are descended from one dog known as Killer Kimbo. Is that... <laughs> I don't know if I trust this website. That's too funny to be real. Who is Dr. Lawrence Newport? They're quoting this guy. Show me. They're calling him a legal academic at Pursuit of Progress. He has a cringe Twitter name. Ah! Legal academic in legal history. YouTuber. Trying not to be cheems. I researched the UK's rising dog crisis. You guys want to take a peek? He has a video. He's being quoted by Wales Online. Uh, and apparently he's claiming the American XL bully breed of dog has been responsible for nearly 50% of all attacks on both humans and dogs and 70% of all deaths to dogs since 2021. It's thought that they're less than 1%. Borzoi are cool as hell. Borzoi are bloodborne dogs. Have you seen a fucking Borzoi standing up? Have you seen that shit? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I love Borzoi, but unfortunately, it has to be known, Borzoi fall under the Dementoid category. This animal is 100% a Dementoid. One, no question. I love them, but they, they are 100% Dementoids. You see that shit? I'm out at night walking home... One of these fucking things walks towards me like that. I am screaming and running. Absolute bloodborne boss. 
However, there is another side of the of the Borzoi coin. When they stand up on their hind legs, they are dementoids. However, the other side of the coin is that when they're not standing up, they are goofuses. Here is an example of the goofus mode. They are snoot boys. Probably, probably helps. Is, is the whole deal of them beating wolves just reach? Do they beat wolves with their reach type deal? Because these, these are the, these are, what are they, Russian? The name sounds Russian. Russian wolf hunting dogs. You somehow feel that this species is secretly powerful. Bruh. Bruh. The sneaky running necromorphs. All right. Let's see what this guy's video is like. This video. I don't like the propaganda music. Just don't. Don't. Just don't. If it's fucked up, just show us the fucked up stuff. Don't put Dementoid music. Dementoid. I can't. <sighs> Chat. <laughs> I don't know if I should tell you where I learned the word Dementoid. <laughs> where, it, where it first was revealed to me. <laughs> This is, uh, I researched the UK's rising dog crisis, Bully XLs, by Dr. Lawrence Newport, otherwise known as In Pursuit of Progress. When you search his name, you get, like, um, some sort of, some sort of research portal as one of the, one of the, yeah, royalholloway.academia.edu. He, he does appear to have legit qualifications. Applications. Supposedly a PhD. So he's not like some bullshitter online calling himself doctor. Mm -hmm. It should go the fucking other way around. Also, Bunny, the dogs are already illegal. Guns and knives are based. People are not based. But for someone to be safe with a weapon, ultimately they just have to not use it. For someone to be safe with a dog, they have to care for it. Hmm. Right. I trust someone with a gun more than I trust someone with a strong animal. As a baseline. This video will be controversial, but I fear necessary. Because if something doesn't Don't. change, this will Stop. only get worse. In the past two years, there has been a dramatic increase in the number of fatal dog attacks in the UK. Between 2001 and 2021, there were an average of 3.3 fatalities, with no single year above six. But in 2022, 10 people were killed, including four children. This year is- Stop talking like this. He is a dementoid. I'm sorry, but it's true. Only halfway over, and there has already been five fatalities. This unprecedented rise is disproportionately attributable to one single breed, the American Bully XL, being behind six of the ten killings in 2022. And My gamer min-max brain is making me want to get one now. It's the meta choice. It's the meta. You have to. Three of the five in 2023 so far. Dog attacks on humans are also on the rise, increasing from 16,000 in 2018 to 22,000 in 2022. And hospitalizations have almost doubled in the last 15 years. Well, These hospitalizations make for particularly difficult reading. 70 Why? Chat, help me. I'm not super good. I'm not super good with uh, spatial stuff, precisely. That circle has a far greater area than double the first one. Why is he got to give that emotional damage to the viewer? Bro, stop. Okay, everyone should, I, I take it back. We shouldn't examine who's able to have them. We should just make everyone have one. Yeah, I was saying it's the Dementoid propaganda music. I would rather a hundred children die than back this guy with his cringe video. I'm sorry percent of injuries on children are to the head. Nearly one third of these require an overnight stay in hospital. And in the city of Liverpool in England, there are four to seven dog bites a week with most injuries to the face. One doctor recounts dealing with a, quote, near decapitation. London's Metropolitan Police are currently dealing with one dangerous dog incident 
per day. We don't have any reliable figures, unfortunately, on dog-on-dog -dog attacks, but there are good reasons to suspect that those are increasing as well. So Just don't include that. If you're trying... Bro, don't say there are good reasons to believe that it's increasing. Blah, blah, blah. Let the viewers come to that conclusion. Let the viewers come to that conclusion. And then show. We don't have that data, but there are many examples. So why is there such a dramatic change? What the hell is going on? <laughs> what the... What... What the hell is going on? Dr. Wowie. What? We Why are you doing out. this? Why does everyone suddenly have autism? <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. That's not a- that's a pig. That's a pig covered in glue and felt to look like a dog. What the fuck is this video? How is the, like, anti-pitbull, anti-bully XL, like, video maker, as bad as the bully march person? How are they so terrible at presenting media to people? No, this is absolutely anti-bully. Uh, spoiler, I've seen this guy's Twitter account. There is no twist. <laughs> what are you doing? What? In the f fuck. So why is it so controversial to say that a breed is more violent than any other? After all, we know that different dog breeds have different traits. Dogs, unlike humans, have been bred for various, very specific traits. You don't even need to go down this path. You don't even need to go down this path, like I was saying. Something's fucked. There are, essentially, beyond it being a threat to other people, I think allowing your dog to be in positions where, where, it, can, where it can harm other people, setting your dog, preparing your dog to do that is effectively, not taking whatever relevant precautions, whatever, 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 that's abuse of an animal you're supposed to care for. Caring for your animal includes, for their sake, not allowing them to harm other people and doing what's necessary to prevent that. It sh should be viewed, at, viewed on top of uh, responsibility to your fellow man, a matter of animal abuse. In fact, their traits, appearance and behaviour have been directed in a way comparable to how we've moulded plant and other animal life over thousands of years. Watermelons and bananas used to be mostly seed, now they're mostly not. Chickens were not always walking meat packets, and yet now they are. These weren't natural events, but the result of humans directing evolution through deliberate cultivation and breeding. Modern day dogs are very clearly a result of this directed breeding. No True. one sensible would deny that we have molded dogs for their particular traits, both physically and mentally. Dogs have deep underlying intuitions, desires and drive. Well, and contrast them with the wolves from which they're all descended as well is probably the easiest way to... If you want to convince people that, that temperament and uh, perhaps level of danger is, is an inherent thing to some degree, I mean, obvious argument for that is just sheer size of the animal and amount of damage they can do rapidly to a larger person. But I think confronting perhaps someone who who thinks there's no element of, of an inherent proclivity, challenge them with the thought of being around a wolf or a lion or something like that. Wolf being the best example. A, a, a wild, hungry wolf. Obviously, I mean, in the wild, wolves typically run. Wolves, wolves, to be fair, wolves are cowards. They will fucking run away. Unless, one, maybe they aren't alone. Two, they are hungry. Compare, compare, would you, would you rather deal with a hungry chihuahua or a hungry wolf? ...that we have selected for over generations. All dog owners are... <laughs> I might say chihuahua, to be honest. I mean, I might say wolf, to be honest are aware of this. In fact, a key responsibility of dog ownership is knowing the breed and understanding that breed's likely traits. Not all individual dogs will show these breed-specific traits, but a- True. Actually, good point that a responsibility is to understand the particular breed. Too often, dog owners are thought, thought of in terms of good or bad, without getting into the specifics of what they need to do. 
lack of exercise can fuck up a dog. Lack of exercise can definitely make a dog more likely to behave aggressively, right? For sure. But again, this is this is down in the weeds in the mechanics. Great many will. For example, some dogs bred for hunting will try to hunt squirrels, rabbits, and small game. Some can be trained out of this, others can't. If you take a border collie raised in the middle of New York City and you drop it in a field filled with sheep, even if it's never seen a sheep before, it will start herding behavior. This is not controversial. Probably true, but you gotta show us that that's true. Controversial. Breeds have traits. We have literally bred them to have them. Pointers point. Retrievers retrieve. So it would, Hex, it would be less... It's not like they have knowledge of what a sheep is. It's probably more like when they get an input like that, they behave like that. Like, you can probably trigger that in them for shit other than sheep. For sure. For sure. Yeah, what Bunny's saying. It's not like they recognize sheep and activate sheep herding protocol. It's just that they'll do it with sheep if you have a bunch of sheep. What was the American Bully XL bred for? Considering this designation is only 30 years old, we have to look at the foundational breed, the American Pitbull Terrier. I warn you before this starts that this is a story of human cruelty and the dark side of progress. A story the starts dark in, England, side of progress. in the early 19th century and the cruel sport of bull baiting in which pit bulls were bred to be set on a bull and indiscriminately injure and maim it until the bull or the dogs died. After bull baiting had been banned, pit bulls were instead locked in a pen with a large number of rats to kill. This required more speed, so they were interbred with terriers to make the pit bull terrier. Whilst mm, it's a much more it's a much more competitive pursuit. Wait, I know this. It's cat juggling. England began clamping down on blood sports. The United States became a breeding ground for them. The Kipburn Saloon in New York City ran an infamous dog fighting ring in which the infamous Sicko Dog 69 tournament. Local politicians and influential people would gather to place bets on which dog could kill the other. These dogs were locked in a pit and forced to fight to the death. People began to breed pit bulls for greater and greater aggression. The most famous of these was John Colby. Colby can reasonably be considered as the father of the modern pit bull terrier and would advertise his dogs as game dogs. Game is a description by dog- Yo, did they have RGB lighting? Fighters, meaning a dog's propensity to violence and its ability to take large amounts of pain and to keep on fighting. Colby's dogs are the root of a lot of American Staffordshire Terriers and American Pit Bull Terriers today. Unfortunately, the fighting roots are not confined to history. Dog fighting was legal in the United States until 1976. And in 2005, the laws were described as only Stop just- Stop bullying me then, American. Finally, beginning to be enforced. In 2021, hundreds of pit bulls were seized that were being used and bred for fighting. And in the UK, there are several thousand dog fights a year. In truth, we have no idea how widespread this is, nor how many dogs are bred from fighting stock and sold to unsuspecting families. And in fact, John Colby's own nephew was killed at two years old by one of Colby's pit bulls. This awful reality ma- I feel like that's- that's interesting knowledge. Dog with baby is big risk. Dog with baby. You probably want to show instances where other dogs are much, much less likely to behave in a certain way. It's, it's notoriously risky to have dogs around a, a being that will probably piss them the fuck off by like grabbing or whatever. Manifests itself pretty clearly. Pitbulls and pitbull types are responsible for over 60% of deaths to dogs in the United States. Similar statistics can be found elsewhere. For instance, in the Netherlands, they're responsible for killing more dogs than any other breed. In 1991, pitbulls were banned in the United Kingdom. But the legal American Bully and American Bully XL derive chiefly from the American Pitbull Terrier with the XL variety being bred multiple times over to produce larger and larger sizes. 
needs to be emphasized here that not every dog will show these traits. And crucially, sure. none of this is the dog's fault. True. They were bred for this. Finally, it's often argued at this point that these dogs only attack people because of the abuse that they receive. But how true is this? Greyhounds used for racing face a truly horrendous life. They spend around 23 hours a day in cages, so small they can barely turn around. Between 2008 and 2018, there were 15,000 greyhound injuries from racing, with injuries as serious as broken legs, broken backs, head trauma, and even electrocution. And is he going to say, however, they aren't responsible for so they aren't responsible for you know a disproportionate amount of attacks? Because I think this is a weak path to go down if he's doing that. For dogs that are deemed not good enough for the race, they are simply discarded. But crucially, despite their size and speed, there is not a single case of a greyhound killing anyone that I can find in the UK or in the US. Okay. Why? You have to get into you have to get into it more. Do they have the same opportunity as pit bulls typically do to commit such things? You're using the example of these greyhounds being kept in cages and abused are they ever out of that fucking situation when they're deemed useless they're just left to fucking die when would they attack someone if they're if it, if they're managed so tightly there is the point that yes a dog like a pit bull if you're going to have it should be managed tightly but if you're going to say it's use this as the example to say well these dogs are abused and they don't attack all the other elements have to be in place are the same. It has to be like conditions apart from the abuse. What explains this? Greyhounds were bred over thousands of years to hunt small game and to do so alongside. He has to include that bunny, or his argument. He's not. If it's not in his video, it's it's a bad presentation. Side hunters Might still and be. their families. The one thing you don't want is your hunting dog turning on you. As such, they were bred for temperament and loyalty to humans, and to focus solely on finding small game to chase and kill. It should be no surprise at all, therefore, that on the very rare occasions that a greyhound acts violently, it does so to rabbits, squirrels, cats, and sometimes small dogs. But no! despite the abuse, not humans. Pointers point, retrievers retrieve, fighting dogs fight, and they don't let go. Whilst oh, that's the that's the dogs bite meme. Yeah, yeah. Taser him three times. Holy shit! I do. I think if a dude, if a dog gets a kid and you have to tase it three times, I think the dog... Look, you have to... You have to give credit where it's due. That is an absolute unit. He can have the kid. It's not all dogs of a breed will show these characteristics. Breed matters. To say it doesn't ignores our thousands of years of history with our number one companion. And it ignores the responsibility that we have to breed loyal, happy, and healthy dogs. We've walked together side by side for generations, but we shouldn't take that for granted. And we have a duty to pass that bond on, unsullied by violence. True. We should guide the XL bullies through interbreeding. Let's go. Now there's a plan. Automatic jaw lock. I mean, you can't, in most places in the West, presumably worldwide, but I don't know. You can't just have a wolf on your street. But what is a dog other than a than a wolf descended to not be a wolf anymore? Just do it with the pit bulls too. Just do it with the pit bulls too. Same same fucking thing. They are still wolves. Look, yes. Taxonomically, they are still a wolf and they'll always be a wolf. Right? Just like how humans will always be apes. Just like how birds are dinosaurs. But you know what I was fucking saying, bro. Okay? So there has been friendly fire. There has been friendly fire. And by friendly fire, I mean quite, uh, quite significant friendly fire. From the Mail Online, which is, you know, Daily Mail Online. XL Bully Campaigner is attacked by one of the dogs he is trying to save after vicious owner set the animal on him when he asked him to put it on a lead. An XL Bully Campaigner who stood up for them and urged people to stop blaming the wrong end of the leash 
has been mauled by one of the dogs after its owner set it on him. Married father of three, Ben, good luck, from Wolverhampton, had puncture wounds and deep bruising after the brutal attack on Friday night. His nightmare unfolded in the tetanol, tetanol, area of the city when he saw the XL bully off its lead just after 10 p.m. When he asked the owner to bring the animal under control, he set the muscular mutt onto him and also attacked him himself. So here's the thing. A huge trend I've been seeing. People go, it's not the dog's fault. It's the owner's fault. Therefore, we should be able to just have our dogs off the off the leash constantly. You know, uh, therefore, you should never have to put a muzzle on. Therefore, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I'll take, I'll take the blame for whatever happens. But Insane. Dementoid. This is a dog overwhelmingly owned by Dementoids. It came just nine days after Mr. Mr. C, who is a dog owner but not of an XL bully, put a social media post up with a picture of one of the dogs saying, Any breed can be taught to be aggressive. It's time we quit blaming the wrong end of the leash. They're already out there. People already have them. There are enough bad owners that people are getting attacked this frequently. What realistic measures do you take to correct that? Wait until the attacks happen? When we know these fucking dementoids have these animals or not, and are not going to look after them properly, and that is a risk to others? It's time we quit blaming the wrong end of the leash. Here's the thing. It's not who... I don't give a fuck who's blamed. What is the correct action to deal with it? Okay, blame the owners. Oh, we have to ban the dogs because it's all the dementoids owning these dogs. And then you can perhaps introduce it again, carefully. Here's the, here's the person, here is a person trying to save their dog. And it is not just about not having the dog taken away or put down, which suggests she's aware uh, that she would be likely to be grandfathered in and just allowed to keep her dog. Watch. So why are you going to this protest tomorrow? Um, to save our dogs is the biggest thing. This is Ozzy. Um, he is my daughter's best friend. And my daughter would be absolutely heartbroken if she couldn't keep him, if she lost him, if he had to wear a muzzle. She'd be heartbroken. Her daughter would be heartbroken if the dog had to wear a muzzle. Remember that this is what's being fought. Not, it's not, we want to keep our dogs. It's, don't have any standards applied to us being allowed to keep them, given given the mass apparent issue of bad owners. They're opposing even measures that would help counter the, the bad owner theory. And she's already heartbroken just at what people are saying because she sees her best friend. Um, and it's just so important. We don't have a repeat of 91 and the pit bulls. Um, and it's just the wrong way to do things. People are to blame. People that are breeding for the wrong reasons, breeding... Breeding dogs for the wrong reasons, it should be said. Okay, people are the problem. Force the owners to take measures that will protect other people, given that they haven't been taking those measures so far. That's, it's, that's basically what will happen. Using their dogs as cash cows and, and mutilating the breed, essentially. This point is bizarre because I don't think it's the I don't think it's the bitches who have been pumping out babies that are attacking people. And she, her argument seems to be that it's a demented form of the breed that's dangerous, which means it is the dogs in her argument. No? They're mutilating the breed by by breeding irresponsibly, breeding them irresponsibly. And that's where the violence comes from. So it's not it's the owner's fault, it's the it's the breeder's fault. It's like she's saying they are that way, but it's not their fault they are that way. This is what an XL bully looks like, what they should look like, and how they should behave. He needs lots of loving, lots of cuddles, always needs to be touching, will follow me everywhere. And if he's away from me for even two seconds, if he's muzzled and not able to suckle on my teat, he will attack. So really, it's your fault. Let's look at this. If it's not interesting, we stop looking at it. But then the comments are amazing. I love the comments. They're so good. 
we have a preview of the angle. We've seen this this lady Shell West and her her bully Ozzy talking about breeders. We have a lot of comments about breeders. Is that the angle they're going to go for? It looked holy. F it looks like the angle they're going for is it's not the dog's fault. It's not the owner's fault. So you can't do anything to separate dog from owner. It's the breeder's fault. Punish the breeder who made this dog who acts like this. To find out more, we're joined by Linda Cantle from the Wood Green Animal Charity, proud XL bully dog owner Chris Halls, and canine behavioural expert Stan Rawlinson. Uh, good morning to morning. all of you. Predictions, predictions. The charity person is going to say that a ban doesn't fix the problem. Uh, thanks for joining let's us see. today. Uh, Linda, let's start with you, first of all, shall we? Because um, a lot of, there's been a lot of talk, obviously, about these dogs. And actually, what are they? So they're not recognised by dog associations such as the Kennel Club at the moment. So are we waiting for an exact definition of this breed? Yeah, exactly that. It's a real challenge. We don't know exactly what an XL bully is right hmm. now. There's a whole myriad of descriptions of what they Oh, God. What if it turns out that XL bullies were women all along? Chris is joining us now with his beloved pet who's asleep on his lap. And it, it, it's hard to imagine, Chris, that we're talking about a dangerous dog when you see, um, see your, your pet sitting there asleep. Um, but introduce us, please. If you look at a cobra being left alone in its enclosure, if you look at people holding and handling cobras, they don't, they don't seem dangerous at all. They don't look dangerous. Yes, yeah, so this is the uh, youngest member of, of our family. This is Furiosa. Um, she's a beautiful... Furiosa, the XL bully. Beautiful dog. Um, she's a, a pure breed XL bully. Um, and I'm Chris. I'm... Wait, pure breed how? I thought they were a... Um... How could it be pure? Because I thought part of its lineage was a dog that's banned and that it was a mix, and that's how they dodged the, uh, the already existing ban. Although I guess maybe that's why it's not well defined because people are people are calling different things XL bullies and his might be some sort of pure lineage. I don't know. I'm a professional dog trainer. Um... Which is why you probably want to do it on phenotype, not genotype, right? And I specialize in working with bull breeds. So, so Chris, I just wanted to, because you've got, you've got, this is your family member right here, but you have got children. You've got me who's 40, 40, uh, 13, you've got Ernie who's five. Why did they get a George Soros impersonator here on, uh, on the second window? As much as you are very professional, like you say, you train these breeds, you, 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 you're happy for them to be around the children, but you wouldn't, for example, and this is what you said to us, never let them play a tug day game because that presents a risk. So even you are aware of the risk. Yes, I, I think that that's where a lot of the problem has come from is that People are not aware of what the risks are of having such a strong, um, determined, powerful dog. Um, yes. So I, I take their interactions with the children very, very seriously. And um, in, in my household, the children are, are treated as gods and what they say goes, the dogs. Dementoid. This is a dementoid household. Full of dementoids all the way down. They're expected to, to mind out of their way, to leave their food alone. Um, and if they play, they play with certain rules. Um, and I, I think that is so important that the dogs have got rules. Um, and that's what we're missing in the, the wider dog community. It's not just the bullies. Mm. Chris, uh, I, this isn't... A the wider dog community, we need to cheat, treat our children as gods. No. We need to get dogs, any animal, out of the hands of these kinds of people, for the sake of the animal, even, as fast as possible. And I think, I'd, I, you, no, you can't grandfather that shit in. You have to get them out. Of, you have to get, dude, 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 no. If even 3%, if even 1% of the people owning these animals are like this, you have to do whatever you can to just get animals the fuck away from them. Total ban. Total, uh, total seizure, send the dogs to an island for a while, I don't know. Slowly trickle them back as you check the people. Criticism, I, I'm just interested. There are so many different dog breeds out there. Why would you choose a dog that does have an element of risk 
That's the thing though, Fabre. He's the rep. He's the he's the specialist rep, dude. In its behavior, when there are some of the other ones you can choose from that are are, are more sedate. It, it it's almost like a cost benefit, isn't it? So. He's going to liken owning an XL bully to gambling in his defense of his ownership of one. Sorry, let's hear that from the start, because that sounds like where it's going. The other ones you can choose from that are, are, are more sedate. It, it, it's almost like a cost benefit, isn't it? So the, the benefits and the personalities of the dogs and the, the, the extreme sort of social connection that you get from them, for me, outweighs that little bit of effort that needs to go into management. And Sorry, explain, okay. explain that. He's calling it effort. He's calling it effort, not risk. Suggesting there is zero risk so long as you behave a certain way. Having acknowledged that there is risk to certain uh, things that could occur. Well, I guess he's saying he's avoiding those things. However, the images we were shown, I think, suggest that he is not really... Uh, that strict on his prevention of scenarios where things could go wrong. Your baby next to a large uh, dog that could break it in half in half a second is not a risk-free choice. What, what do you mean by that, that social connection? So the, the way that they've been bred is, is really because they wanted to move away from the fighting dogs. There's a very, very strong um social drive and i personally have not seen that connection with a dog in any other breed mm. it's uh, you almost have to see them and meet them to believe it okay so you're sort of there from what i'm reading to not get rid of these dogs i'm sorry hand them away for f send them to another country hand them away for free to the people who want them i'm sure there are enough brits cannot own these dogs brits cannot have these dogs no no, at the very least, the people, at the very least worldwide, the people here, we've, we've seen, we've seen too many examples already, too extreme. Just beating something is not enough for this. They've got to kill it, which is why in the last three years, 75% of all deaths in this country have come from attacks from XL bullets. <laughs> now, you've got... He clearly misspoke. He <laughs> misspoke, but... 75% of all deaths in the world <laughs> come from these 12 dogs. He, he clearly means deaths caused by dogs. We need to all start keeping wasps and then unleash them. Just to unleash a few and just be like, it's the breeder who sold them to me. It's not the bees. It's not me. It's the breeders. It's the wasp breeders. You can't do anything about it, okay? Because it's the wasp breeders. Gothic Explorer six days ago says, Make breeders accountable. All breeders to be licensed and only if they meet certain criteria. Breeding dogs must have all health tests. Breeding dogs have to pass a temperament assessment. Breeders must scrutinize potential puppy buyers to be sure they go to the right homes. Breeders must take back any dog they bred if the owner can no longer keep it. People are just, they're trying to hand it off onto breeders. They're trying to say it's not the dog, it's not the owner, it's the breeder. This would guarantee there would be no more bread. Ever. If the owner says, I don't want it anymore, it has to go back to the breeder. Surprise, they will not be bred anymore. Puppies to be microchiped to the, to the breeder for life. And if a dog they bred causes injury to a parson, to have their breeding license removed. Let's get rid of people who breed for profit. Do they want... Do they want breeders just handing out XL pipples to people? What do you mean, get rid of the ones who breed for profit? profit? People who sale puppies to anyone with the cash and take no responsibility for the dogs they bred after they go to new homes. No care where they go. Fix the problem at the route. <laughs> uh, the place where the puppy is brought into the world. 
And also, let's put a cap on the price of puppies, with 1,000 being the most you can charge for a dog. Stop people getting rich off the back of breeding. There's a problem with the dogs going to anyone who can just because someone can afford it. We need to make them cheaper. Do you think if the government implemented this person's ideas, they'd be able to recognize that it's an effective total ban? Would, would other bully defenders support these terms and not understand that it's a total ban in effect? Is that what we should do? Oh my god, how are the comments as this bad? How are the responses this bad? Uh, in brackets, logical and rational comment, but not practical. If a dog's designed to attack and kill, one, it should have a muzzle and leash in public. Two, exactly the wrong people that will always have those dogs. Okay, Politics Joe. I don't know what Politics Joe is. However, we have a couple quotes at the top. They say, what happened to innocent until proven guilty? I don't think that's a standard applied to animal control. But also, quote, there's rapists and murderers and pedophiles roaming the streets and nothing's quickly done. Sure. Hundreds of furious XL bully owners protested the potential ban of the breed in central London, but didn't bring the dogs with them. To be fair, as, as I've said before, that's reasonable. Bringing a ton of dogs together in one place where there's going to be a lot of stimulation that they might not be prepared for is, is a recipe for disaster for your dog. Just don't do it. All right, ready? We've got, uh, we've got Rishi Sunak as Hitler. Uh, Hitler famously wanted to uh, control animals to protect humans. Of course, of course. Uh, don't bully our breed, Hitler Sunak. The best way to take control over people and control them utterly is to take a little of their freedom at a time to erode rights by a thousand tiny and almost imperceptible reductions. They're removing the rights of, of pit bulls to be in the country, okay? And, look, your right to own one but they're living, they're living creatures. This, somewhat true, somewhat true take. However, of all the fucking things in the UK you can apply this to, stopping dementoids from having a 60 kilogram child chomper is not the, is not the one to point at. There are a million things to say this about. In this way, people will not see those rights and freedoms being removed. Uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, boiling the frog, etc., etc. Well, what happened to, you know, innocent until proven guilty? It's, it's affecting all dogs. Do you know what I mean? Like, my dog, like, the scrutiny he gets, the looks he gets when I'm walking down the road, do you know? Do you think it has anything to do with the gigantic white and gold spiked collar and gigantic chain leash? They're looking at him. Yes, you put, like, a... You, you, you vajazzled your dog. I mean, it's just not fair at all, mate. Stop making us so... The way people look at your dog isn't fair. Do they also, like, catcall your dog? Is it the male gaze? Suffer and worry and let us know what you're going to do now. Don't make us how, suffer. How? Yeah, there's rape. Jesus Christ. I need to see that again. That's not real. Those teeth are growing in real time. Can I suffer and worry and... The scrutiny he gets, the looks he gets when I'm walking down the road, do you know what I mean? It's just not fair at all, mate. Stop making us suffer and worry and let us know what you're <laughs> gonna do now. Don't make us How? suffer. Holy fuck. When you're, when you're concerned about your pet's future, what you want is for people to rush in legislation. No. Demented. Yeah, she's the, she is the owner who, if her dog bites someone, she'll rush in to rip your throat out with her teeth so she can cover for the dog. How? You know, there's rapists and murderers and everything else roaming the streets um, and pedophiles and nothing's quickly done. Uh, Everyone here. I thought that quote would have more to it. Is her point? So what's, what's a few extra pit bulls thrown into the mix? What is her point? Does she mean, so you need a pit bull to defend the child? Or is the idea that the pit bulls will, will compete with the pedophiles for access to the children? Also, stand for what is rigged. Stand for what is rigged. Everyone here is not the stereotype. Do something about those instead of pit bulls. You think that's her take? Maybe. 
Pedophiles aren't a problem if all the children have already been eaten. There won't be any to molest. Counterpoint. If you really believe th that they're completely incapable of doing anything about that, if you think if you think enforcement is that terrible, kind of is a bit, to be fair, but how worried are you about enforcement against you then? Surely. Is not the stereotype what the news portray in drug dealers and rappers. We're not I don't think the media portrays XL bully owners as drug dealers and rappers. Just fucking stupid. Just dumb. Just idiots. Normal people. We're normally family people with, that love our dogs, you know? If any time that I'm up... Oh, using... I didn't, I didn't realize it was a little kid being made to hold the poster. Yeah, it, I gotta say, you, you do look like... This does look like the behavior of, of, a, uh, of an XL bully owner, from what I've seen so far. Just saying. Of our dogs, you know? If any time that I'm upset or anything, my dog will come up to me. They're trying to say that these are a dangerous killer breed. My sister has these with three kids and she's pregnant. And the dog will sit and cuddle up with her all day. Yeah, because it can't wait for its meal to be dispensed. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, knows, it knows there's a snack in there, bro. It knows. It can tell. It's <laughs> spawn camping. When an XL bully, quote unquote, type dog attacks a child, the breed gets banned. Jimmy Savile did it and got knighted. What is. Oh, so it's good then. Kids getting fucked up is good. It must be. D apply. Beat the double standard. I think our dog should be celebrated for eating kids, just like Jimmy Savile w uh, got away with abusing people. What do you mean? Yeah, knight all pit bulls. Demented. Demented. Neutra nonces. Fair. Muzzle the media? As tempting as it is, no. Press does, at least hypothetically, theoretically, ideally, have value. Why would you compare your, your breed to a pedophile? I don't... <laughs> Why would you... Jimmy Savile raped kids and got knighted. My dog, when my dog eats a kid, everyone's angry. They want it to die. That's not fair. We should treat everyone like that. What the f- They're an absolutely lovely breed. It's not the breed, it's the owners. You're one of the owners. You just said the problem's me. Not technically, he said. The idea is I'm one of the good ones, there are bad ones. But still, I don't think you'll find a single owner who doesn't say it's the owners. They're talking about themselves, obviously. Which is a problem. Even if there is nothing wrong with the dogs, that there is uh, that there is enough of a number of fucked owners that these dogs are disproportionately causing harm to people versus other breeds. The owners are a problem that has to be dealt with. What's the difference in a Chihuahua wearing blink? About fifty-five kilograms. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. This is my dogs. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't mean it's a statement or anything. It's at the very least a fashion statement. Okay. At the end of the day, it's a bit of bling. You know, Elton John yes. wears this. Yeah, I don't. Elton John's kind of making a statement. Right? I, I presume he's alluding to, like, a statement of, uh, oh, I'm hard, I'm tough, my dog's dangerous, whatever, it's a, it's a macho thing. I guess he's suggesting it's not a macho thing. But in terms of not sending a message, there's definitely, at the very least, an element of status. Do you know what I mean? So, why can't my dog? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Elton John wears bling, why can't my dog? Like, you, you can. Go ahead, but... What did they ask this guy? We didn't hear the question. Is anyone campaigning for, for pit bulls to not have bling? I thought they were, bro, muzzle that dog up with the blingiest muzzle of all time. Do it. You can get even more on there. Exactly, Sam Smith probably wears worth, do you know what I mean? I've got two XL bullies myself and I've got six children, so uh, they're not dangerous dogs. I have. Two of these dogs and six children, therefore, these dogs aren't dangerous. I flipped the coin and I got heads, therefore, it's more likely to be heads for every coin you flip. Yeah, they can be dangerous dogs used in, with the wrong people and in the wrong cans. Sorry, hang on. Wait. She said two different things. Yeah, they can be dangerous dogs used in, with the wrong people and in the wrong cans. So in the wrong hands would be referring to the owner. But she also said, with the wrong people, in the wrong hands. What do you mean, with the wrong people? 
You mean the, the victims of the attacks would be an example of with the wrong people, as opposed to in the wrong hands, which would refer to the owner? Me, show me where, where, where a bully has, uh, has attacked someone. These guys are... <laughs> There's a really cool video. There's a really cool video of someone with one of those, like, not a hang glider, but... Uh, one of the one of the the boards with the uh, with the sail that you can sort of sort of glide with a bit. It's pretty spooky. Paraglider, yeah, yeah. These guys are saying they've got XLs, but they're not XLs. I've never met a nasty XL ever in fifteen years. But you're a bit older than fifteen, aren't you? Did you <laughs> do you mean have you? Uh, how many did you meet 16 years ago? No, I guess, I mean, they were really, they were really introduced and became, started to become popular in 2014. So I get what she's saying, but I don't care. Anecdote, 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 anecdote. Doesn't matter. Let's see this again, though. Attack someone. These guys are saying they've got XLs, but they're not XLs. Doesn't, doesn't matter. If it turns out it's going to be a nitpicky, like, oh, the breed that these dumb fucks are all collecting and then, and then abusing and letting hurt people isn't the XL, doesn't matter because part of legislating is going to be defining the breed. Which will mean if it's not what you'd consider to be an XL, then your dog's going to be fine because it won't be, the definition won't cover your dog. I've never met a nasty XL ever in 15 years. Oh, I guess the idea is it's a no true XL argument. No true XL. Never met one. And at the end of the day, imagine someone turning around and saying that your family's going to be banned or potentially potentially have to be castrated or potentially even in that's the thing it's not even just don't take our dogs away it's it's we don't want muzzles we don't want our dogs to be spayed and neutered worst case euthanized they're not humans a pet is not analogous to a family member you can care about a pet a great deal you can care for a pet a great deal but they're always going to be below a family member they're going to be in a completely different league, different category. Um, I feel strongly one because I own one and he is the best boy in terms of managed training and just behave around all sorts of people and environments that I've ever kind of experienced with the dog. And he provides me safety that the government doesn't. One, one, what you really want, lady, is like pepper spray, a blade, a gun, so on and so forth. You have full control over that. You have full control over that. You also probably shouldn't be at a protest in the UK where all sorts of weapons are, are verboten and describing your dog essentially as, as a weapon of self-defense. You're handing, you're handing Rishi Sunak a massive W. UK doesn't have guns though? Yeah, and it won't have pit bulls anymore, especially if it's characterized in the same way a weapon will be characterized. Uh, this is, if, if you feel that the police are incapable of protecting you, I would suggest the political action you'd want would be to uh, have laws surrounding self-defense, laws surrounding around laws surrounding what you're allowed to have on your person for self-defense. Looked at if you think you need something to keep you safe, a dog. I don't believe. She's training her dog to attack on command and stop on command anyway. So presumably what she means is she's gotten it for its image of being scary, right? Keeping an animal to bring out and about with you to instill fear with the intent of instilling fear in the people around you, essentially, to deter them from engaging with you. Particularly if they were someone who meant to deal you harm, but obviously you must understand that that's going to that's going to have an effect on other people as well. Dementoid. Dementoid, I can empathize with fear, especially with some of the stuff that's gone on in the UK, especially if you're a woman, things that have not been dealt with right, things that have been allowed to happen, things that do happen. I can empathize, or at least sympathize with the fear. I, I guess I can't empathize because I don't feel it myself. I don't feel it myself, but I can sympathize. The solution isn't as like a... a as a little rail thin lady who could be blown away by the breeze walking around with a with a 60 kilogram dog i don't think so 
have a kind of experience with the dog and he provides me safety that the government doesn't. They keep saying that they're trying to keep people safe. Does he provide you safety though? How do you know? And he is the only thing that allows me to walk the streets and not get disrespectful comments. Demented. Demented Dementoid. In terms of safety, she's talking about disrespectful comments? She owns a huge dog because the government doesn't stop people from, like, catcalling or something, I guess. Not be followed and not have sort of, you know... Followed. Okay. That's, that's an experience. There are fucking creepers who will follow you. Probably a dog would deter that. Is that a good reason to have a dog and bring a dog with you constantly? So, here's the thing. Even if you aren't going to use your dog as a, as a weapon, as an attack dog, if you're going to use it as a deterrent, you should have to train it to attack, kill, stop attacking. Because, what if your deterrent one day doesn't deter someone and they try something? What are you going to do then? What are you going to do when your dog gets freaked the fuck out and someone attacks it and then it just, hey, it's a dog, it's not smart. It starts biting you. What do you do? How, how would she deal with a scenario where her deterrent doesn't deter someone? How about a scenario when her deterrent doesn't deter a child from doing something and the dog gets spooked by the child and attacks it? She probably referred to a child as them, but it's a hypothetical child, so I don't think of, it's like thinking about a doll. What if the dog attacks them? <laughs> they should make guns that don't talk to you at night. I hear Ethan Klein really wants one of those. Especially if I'm running, goodness, I can run with him and I'm safe. If I go out and about by myself, I'm not safe. They don't keep me safe from men or the police. I'll get looked at for the way I look. The government doesn't keep you safe from men, from men or the police? You need a dog. You need a dog to protect you from the police. <laughs> That's pretty fucking based. But also, this statement is pretty much guaranteeing. That's This is so good for the people who want just all pit bulls put down. She's doing the work for that. I want, I want separation of the dogs from the Dementoids. Like, I am potentially for a ban as a step just to get a mass removal of these dogs from dementoids uh but i don't want them all destroyed or something for example like i'm i i'm sicko mode i think you should be able to you know pri privately own a lion or something uh but we have too many too many goblinoids with these dogs in particular if i go out and about by myself i'm not safe they don't keep me safe from men or the police. I get looked at for the way I look sometimes, you know. But until people know me, you know, that's when you judge people. You know, that's, you judge people on how they act and their character, not on the way they look. Same with dogs, mate. That's right. Yes, and people have been watching videos of these gigantic dogs grabbing people by the neck, slamming them on the ground, tearing their throat out, tearing their arms apart, killing people. It, yes. That's what's been happening. That's why the Prime Minister saw fit to step in and talk about what he's doing to get rid of them. Or get them out of people's hands. There's been multiple media reports about ex attacks. There was one last night in South London. What would you attribute that to? Bad dog ownership. 100%. It's got to be bad dog ownership because then you can have these dogs and if you show them love and then, you know, you show them how... They attack because you don't show them love. How it's meant, how they're meant to be in society. They're show them how they're meant to be. They're not fucking people. The, 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 show them love, show them how they're meant to be in society. They're talking about them like a naughty chid, naughty chid, naughty kid in school. You have to. This sounds brutal or whatever. No, you have to dominate them. Which, which sounds fucked up. But what I mean is... They have to be as incapable as possible of acting outside of your limits for them. I think any dog is capable of being a good dog. You know, there's uh, been more dog attacks by Spaniel breeds than it has bullies. You know, so it's... How many Spaniels are there in the country? How many bullies, which are es essentially exist here as a loophole to a breed that's already been banned since 91? How many... How, what's the number? What are the numbers? How many... 
versus how many there are. It could be true. It could technically be true. I don't know. But even if it is, what are what are the, what are all the numbers? Just it's it's. I think it's just down to breedism and responsible ownership. Breedism. We have about a minute left. If someone says socioeconomic factors before the end of this little video, I'm ending the stream. Let's check. The subtitles could be wrong. Your reason it has bullies, you know. So Close it's just eyes. it's it's. I think it's just down to breedism and responsible ownership. It sounds like breedism to me. How many hundreds and thousands, and I'm saying hundreds of thousands of American bullies there are in the world? We don't get this. This, you know, this is a small percentage of attacks. If you're going to look statistically at things, Excel bully, standard pocket. We're talking about what's happening in the UK, though. It's a, it's a local issue. Is she going to say it's the environment? She's saying it doesn't happen in the rest of the world where these dogs also are, and there are so many. I don't actually think that's correct from what I've seen about the US. Is the argument then going to be it's the environment? Classic. Well, hold on a minute. You've got that little amount of XR bullies, but the rest of them are doing nothing. So why is the XL bully doing it? Oh no, she's about to become red pilled. She's about to go. Does she know what she's saying? Because it's not an XL bully. What? I didn't. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd all be doing it. They'd all be attacking. No matter what their size is, they'd all be attacking. Is her argument that there's a fucked breed just in the UK? It sounds like she's saying there is just a f this fucked little niche subbreed in the UK. It's not the XL bullies. But then why would she be against what's happening? Because they're going to define bully XL. And it will be defined in terms of whatever those problem dogs are. Which would mean they'd be calling it bully XL, but your actual bully XLs would be unaffected because they're a different kind of dog. If what you're saying is true and accurate, then you're saying there is a problem breed that's a small number of, of a certain kind of dog, bred a certain way. If defined precisely enough, it will only hit those dogs and not the bully XLs, despite the government calling it bully. They are, they are overrepresented in dog attack statistics. Um, I think, if I'm being honest with you, that the problem that we've got is you could say that they are represented in the, and yes, they are, okay? What? Look at how hard she's thinking. She's got tongue out, tongue out, eyes up into the side. But what I'm saying to you is, prove to me that that is an Excel bully. They're going to be able to. Milady, the government is going to tightly define the breed, and then you can use that definition to prove that it is a bully Excel. The reason... She's relying on their, as far as I know, none of the dog authorities, or, or whatever you'd, you'd call them, have a clear definition, or even recognize as a legit breed, Bully XLs. That's why it's hard to define. That doesn't mean they don't exist as something that can be defined and recognized. That's a, her strategy might work for a while for some people. It's not going to last very long, especially when you have the government saying, no, fuck you, here's the definition. That one is happening on the 30th boredom. The protest designed to have the maximum number of dogs and maximum number of babies in vicinity of the dogs, that happens on the 30th. Save, Save our, our breed! breed! Save, Save our, our breed! breed! Save our breed! breed! Save and stop lying! Thank you very much! Stop lying in the media. Do you think that lady has to clip her teeth every night? Because if she doesn't, they grow too long and like curl around and stab her brain. You know, like how guinea pigs have to chew things to stop the, and other rodents have to wear their teeth down. Do you think? <laughs>